Freight Train by Elizabeth Cotton. Mike's Music Method. If you haven't seen the video of Elizabeth Cotton playing this song, stop this video and go watch it. Freight Train Elizabeth Cotton. It's the first one that'll come up. She's 90 something years old. At least in another video, she's playing the song and she goes, Not bad for a 90 something. This is unbelievable for so many reasons. First off, the song's incredible. Great picking. I, I mean, sometimes my thumb hurts. I'm 36 years old. And sometimes after a day of playing, I'll get like, I don't know what the deal is, but I get thumb pain. And I'm just like, what is going on here? She's 90 something years old. And the song is so, she plays it way better than I do. And she's 90 something years old. Watch it, listen. And then, if you didn't notice, she's left-handed. But unlike Jimi Hendrix, everyone always gives Jimi Hendrix credit. He played the guitar upside down. Not really. He played a right-handed guitar lefty. Yes. But he restrung the guitar. Elizabeth Cotton does not restring the guitar. So the lowest string is on the bottom. So she's Travis picking with her index fingers doing the alternating bass line. And then her thumb's playing the melody. And it's making me think, like, maybe... Maybe the guitar would be better off played that way. I don't know. There's something really gorgeous about the tone she gets of playing the thumb with her melody. And it's just, there's no way to replicate it. It's unbelievable. So go watch the video. Watch it a whole bunch of times. Realize how amazing it is on so many levels that this 90-year-old woman is singing and playing this song and doing it upside down, left-handed, with her scraggly voice. It'll break your heart. You can find a tab for the song at mikesmusicmethod.com. I did a tab this time. I'll be showing you how to play this song in standard tuning, but on the record, and I've now adopted this, I think it's gorgeous. She has her guitar tuned an entire whole step down. It's actually around like 430 hertz, maybe 431 or 432. So if you can change the hertz on your tuner, do about 431, 432, and you're going to tune your E string all the way down to a D and everything is tuned down an entire whole step and you get this really kind of dark tone. It's beautiful. So now on my classical guitar, I just keep the thing tuned a whole step down. I used to kind of like make fun of people who would do alternate tunings, but uh, just something, uh, the strings are bendier and it's like a little more noodly and loose sounding. Um, it's, it's fun, so mess around with it. But we're gonna do this song, no capo, standard E tuning to make it simple. But just know that if you try to play along with her, it's it's not the case. The first shape is a C chord, but instead of the C as the root, you move it up. So you have the third fret, sixth string, the G is the root. The thumb's going back and forth between that sixth string and the fourth. The melody notes are all on the lower string beat. the beginning you have six string the first string my pinky is down getting that high G melody note and the thumbs alone then I lift my pinky for that first string melody note there so one and six together fourth alone one and six together again but my pinky's lifted fourth alone now my melody notes on the second string I put my pinky down on the third fret of the second string all right so it's together six and two fourth alone then six and two again, but I lift my pinky. Four the one, so we have three, oh, three, one. That's your melody. Here are the next two measures. We have just a basic G chord here. I'm hitting the sixth string and the third string at the same time. Then the thumb is alone on the fourth. Then I have together six and one, but my pinky is down in that third fret on the high E string. So six and three, thumb alone, six and one. And then right away I move the melody here to the first fret of the first string and I do four and one at the same time. That give you that G7 chord. Six, three, thumb alone, six, one, four, one.
continues. Then it continues. So I have just a regular G chord, six and four. One, two, and that's the third string open. Six, then the second string open. So six. So the next part here is just all on G chord, no fancy melody notes, just thumb, thumb, third, thumb, second, thumb, 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 third, thumb, second, thumb. So that whole phrase Seven note ring that whole time. G seven. Right, I'm just kind of keeping that first fret down to let it sing. Here's a cool little descending melody line with a neat little G seven shape. So we start just a regular G chord, just these two fingers is all you need. Um, six one. Write my pinkies down. Six, one, four, then the third string open. Six, one, four, three is my right hand. And it's the same idea, but it's on a G7. Remember to be careful about when you're changing that melody note. You don't want to change it with the thumb. All right, I'm waiting till the last possible second to move that melody note down. I'm doing opens and I lift that first finger but look where I added my pinky I'm not playing the third fret of the fourth string so it's still a G7 chord but it's a really neat way to voice it instead of that F being up there we have it here so same right hand idea six and then open on the first string Thumb on the fourth, but right when I'm going to play that thumb on the fourth string, I add my pinky on the third fret, then third string open. So it's really simple once you get the pinky down there. Six, first, fourth, third. But it's moving into it that's hard. Right, gotta add that pinky real smooth. exaggerate the pinky so you can see it. And then, now this is kind of tricky. It's a very similar idea, but now I have also the third fret on the second string. So there's a bunch of ways to think about playing that. I'm changing the whole chord. Oh, so in order to play that G7 that way with that D melody note, I have my um, middle finger now on that low G. My ring finger is on the fourth string, third fret, and my pinky is on the third fret of the second string. And the, the right hand pattern is almost the same except it's six, two, because now you have the top melody note on the second string. Six, two, four, three. Six, two, four. So there are lots of ways to approach that little descending line. And here is a perfect example of, you know, I teach people of all ages and skill levels. I'm also asked about, well, do I definitely need to, you know, use these fingers for this kind of chord? And sometimes I definitely do encourage 
a certain way to play a chord with a certain fingering. But this is one of those these moments where like, I don't really know. Um, so there's a, I'm just gonna say that, I don't know. Uh, you can look and see how she does it. But again, the guitar is up, upside down. So it's, it, it's probably a wholly, totally different way to think about it. Um, but what I'm doing is I have my ring finger down first for that G. And then the very last chord, I'm moving everything. And I can practice that way pretty smooth. And then I'm changing, right? I'm now moving my middle finger to that low note and putting those in there. Now, if you have a bigger hand, you might say, well, why not just use this middle finger from the beginning? For me, that's hard to reach, right? I, I like really gotta move my arm there. I guess I could do it, but this like feels really uncomfortable for me to get that first finger to stretch. But if you can, it's probably easier because then this never has to move, right? You can voice that last one just by adding the pinky to the last chord. So if your hand is big enough, that's probably ideal, but you still don't get to escape from moving because you have to jump back to that other shape no matter what to get that finger there. So I would just pick away, maybe try both at first, but very quickly pick away and just dedicate the time into how you're gonna do that weird shift of chords. But, but I know you're, you're so intelligent and skilled that you're gonna get it no matter what. Just, I have faith in you. Don't hurt yourself though. Keep your wrist straight. Don't hurt yourself. I'm not responsible. Mike, Mike, Mike's music method will not be responsible for anyone who takes their medical advice to do this with their hand and hurts themselves. Mike will not be held legally responsible for any disper... Battery's not included. Sorry, to confuse you even more, I don't know why I had it in my head that the melody was on a certain rhythm. I feel like I'm mixing up a couple of versions of Elizabeth Cotton playing it because the recording studio version is actually quite different than how she plays it live, at least in a few moments. So I think this descending part, it's now she plays it together, six and one, and then it's on the offbeat. So it's together melody, then the offbeat, then together, then the offbeat. more staggered instead of always being on the downbeat it's on the downbeat on an up on the downbeat on an up next couple measures so we're back to the C chord but with the G in the bass instead of the C. And we have first melody note is on the second string, first fret of the second string. So it's six and two together, thumb alone, and then the offbeat is the third string. Six, two, four, three. Then six, and then an off the offbeat, I put my pinky down on the third fret of the high string. alternating the bass here she does the same string twice two G's right two low E strings so that whole part cool sound now we have E major thumbs going back and forth between six and four we start with um, six and the melody note on the first string Offbeat, six and one, fourth, third. Then it's six and then second string. Then thumb alone. Together, thumb, third, thumb, second, thumb. Together, thumb, third, thumb, 
second thought. And then the second time, it's the same thing, but we add the pinky on the third fret to get a D7 sound at that last second. And remember to add it when you hit that second string, not when you play the thumb. F chord, a little bit tricky. We have um, nothing on the first string, first, second, third. Thumb plays the first fret, right? If you've seen my other videos, you've seen this voicing of the F chord, right? We're not playing the fifth string, so we don't need it. We free up our pinky to play some melody notes. Now what's hard is she comes out of that last E chord, um, and then on the fourth beat, you're kind of lifting up that chord to go to the F, but you're gonna hit open on the third string. And then you can hammer on to the second fret, but you're actually hammering on to the whole entire chord. So open on the third string, and then when you hammer that second fret down, you're also thumbing that low F. So I'm kind of like hammering down the entire chord. And the same time that I hammer, I play that thumb on the sixth string. That you might have to just practice in and of itself open on the third string, hammer on the entire chord, but not only are you hammering the chord, you're also playing that first fret of the thumb of the F chord. So it's and one, and one. So practice that if that's hard. All right, Mrs. Cotton. Tell us your secrets. I've given you that excellent dental hygienic advice about the oil pulling to keep you away from the dentist? Now, Mrs. Cotton, tell the YouTube community your secrets. What do you put on your fingers at night? Is it hot sauce? Capsation? Turmeric? Or is it apple cider vinegar? Do you soak your fingers in apple cider vinegar every night to ward off that arthritis? Still picking like that at 90 years old? Mm, tell us your secrets, old lady. You don't know what I can do to you. I work out. I'm strong. You're an old bag of bones. I'm only 36, but you better tell me. My thumb already hurts. No keeping those secrets, old lady. I'll, be I'll beat you into the ground. We just want to know how you did it. What do you eat? What did Miss Cotton eat? What do you think she ate? What did she eat? How, did, how are her fingers so agile? I'll put her in an early grade. Too bad. You're lucky you're dead, Miss Cotton, or I'd put you in an early grave. <laughs> oh my god. After you get that tricky hammer on, we have um six second string, fourth, third. Nothing tricky there. Then it's six second string, but then you put your pinky down and you bend it. six and two together, but that's when you lift your pinky back to the first fret on the second string. So six and two. double up again instead of alternating it's thumb thumb both on the six string so that second half of that that whole F chord is tricky. Right. We go 
back to the C chord with the G in the bass. If I'm going to six and four, and it sounds like this. So we have six with three together. And then you go to the first string, so it's a big uh, jump there. Thumb alone. So six and three, top string alone, thumb alone. And then the second string alone. And then on the last beat, so we have, sorry, six, three, first string alone, fourth alone, second alone. And the thumb alone, and then the last beat, I move my second finger down to the third string, second fret. And I play the thumb on the fourth and my index finger on that third string with the second fret down. Move that finger. All right, so. Sorry. So you get like a C6 sound because you have that A in there. Then we go to this different shape or that G7 shape. We're gonna prepare for that. So I'm pivoting. I'm doing my middle finger now on that G. Six and two together. Thumb and on the third string. Thumb alone. Then I put the fingers down after that. And again, you can stagger when you put those left hand ones down. Pinky on the third fret of the second string, then the ring finger goes down, third fret of the fourth string, so. Right, both of these aren't, it's pinky, it's dun, dun, pinky, then the ring finger on those third frets, if you wanna be super exact about it. Uh, what's a good angle, here we go. And I think you got it, but it's six and two, four, three. And the second part is um, six, two, and thumb on four. You can just practice that, and putting those left hand fingers down at the right time. Now this beautiful, unexpected walk. That sounds great in context, but it's pretty simple to play alone. It's just three, the note C, right? Fifth fret, third, sorry, third fret, fifth string. And then open on the third string. Then you play open on the fifth. Three, open, open, open. Three on the low string, open, open, open. C, A, G, D. Always with that third string open in between. One last chord before the turnaround. Here we have a normal C. One last chord before the turnaround. Here we have a normal C. So I'm doing fifth, fourth, and then I do move my ring finger to the sixth, fourth. So we have that alternating bass, three string thing. Sorry. It's thumb, thumb, and on the third string. Thumb, and on the second string there. Thumb, thumb, third, thumb, and on the second, thumb. <laughs> You're almost there. I know that you can hear the, the, the smoker's voice of Elizabeth Cotton. You can hear her. It's coming from somewhere. You're not sure if it's a different room in your house or the basement, your cellar, or maybe she's inside your head, but you hear Miss Cotton going, Oh, you almost got it, sonny boy. You almost got it. You're nearing the end. But you'll never play it as good as me. You'll have arthritic hands by the time you're 59. You'll never make it to 93 picking this beautifully. And she's right. Elizabeth Cotton is completely right. But it's okay, you'll do the best you can, the best you can, and you're getting there. You're doing it, you're doing fine. Keep at it, keep working at it. 
So close. All right, the turn around, we go back to the E. The right hand's a little bit different. Really cool. So we have this hammer on on the end of the previous measure, the, the fourth, the final beat, the upbeat of the four. You're playing the third string open and you're hammering on the first fret of an E chord. But it's a compound movement. The second I'm doing that hammer, I'm hitting the sixth string open at the same time. Open, thumb, and then the third string again. And then I put the pinky down, and I'm hitting that second string, pinky down on the second string. First, third, second. There it is. The second half's a little different. And it's the same, it starts the same way. But it ends there. So it's third string with the hammer on, first string, thumb, and then the second. And then the thumbs are alone. So that whole phrase. Really tricky, I'm gonna do it slow. Start with that open, second, third, sorry, first, third, second, hammer, first, second. Catching the groove, because now the F is exactly the same. Again, that hammer compound motion into the F. to that same C with the G in the bass. We do that C6. This is the same too, G to G7. But now instead of that walk, it just goes straight into this. All right, so that C again where I'm walking the bass. All right, five, four, six, four, five, four, six, four. That's the third string there, one. String. That's the second string there. And I'm not sure, I think she does that twice. Or maybe there is no high second string the second time. Just simple thumb at the end. Free train, free train, played it so well. You did it. You played Freight Train. It's a beautiful song. And you, you practiced, you're gonna work on it more. You're gonna get it, it's gonna be awesome. You're gonna play it for your friends, you're gonna play it for your old grandma. And she's gonna go, Mad Elizabeth Cotton. I don't know how she did it. Your grandma's gonna be there in a wheelchair, she's hardly moving. Meanwhile, Elizabeth Cotton is frickin' blazing from playing circles around your young spry self. It's embarrassing, but it's okay. We're doing, we each do the best we can. If you got enjoyment out of this video, found value in it, please consider, I'm not begging, but I'm just asking, please consider um, donating, giving, throwing a couple bucks my way to um, my uh, PayPal account, or consider a monthly subscription on Patreon. Either thing is super helpful and appreciated. Um, I'm sure you've heard these plugs before, but like even if everyone only gave a dollar That'd be amazing. I would be able to make so many more of these videos, put focused time into it, and then I wouldn't have to hustle. Like if I could just do this, and you give a dollar, that's it, a dollar a month, and then so many people can get this amazing finger-picking education, and I can put more time into it, make more videos, and not have to, you know, do all these other things to feed my family. So that would be rad. If not, just share it and subscribe. You're a piece of crap if you don't donate. You're real. Come back. No, you're fine. You're fine. I'm sure it's a joke. It's just a piece of freaking crap. No, it's fine. Just enjoy the video. The content's free. I'm not going to charge anybody. Just play it. Play the songs and share it with your friends, okay? 
Don't feel guilty, you know, that you're a piece of crap and you can't even give Mike, your buddy Mike over here, a buck a month. Freaking like, don't worry. I know you're, you know, you're a scumbag, you're dirt, you're filth, you're like a worm in the ground, but don't worry about any of that. Just keep practicing. And <laughs> yeah, I can't do these plugs. All right, to all of you people who commented in my previous videos, thank you. I'm gonna break it down nice and slow at the end. Excuse me if I switch it up. There are so many variations she does and I I shouldn't have listened to her play it in so many different settings because I've confused myself. But I'm trying to stick to that live one where it's just oh, her like an old bag of bones. That's a big, the most popular one on YouTube. So we're gonna do this really slow and it's gonna be beautiful. You're, you're a professional. I already know it. So one, one, two, three, four. I, I can't, I don't even know how to count. There we go. Three, four. tricky part again is that um, she does it a few different ways sometimes it's always that offbeat other times it's together off together off but other than that that's it beautiful beautiful a little bit caught in, in your dreams Oh, bag of bones gonna make you scream When you try to sleep at night She will wake you with a fright Arthritic hands tickle down your back Think you keep your cool but you gonna crack that freakish lady and her sagging skin gonna wake you. <laughs> Frickin' like, don't worry. I know you're, you know, you're a scumbag, you're dirt, you're filth, you're like a worm in the ground, but don't worry about any of that. Just keep practicing. 90 years old, mm, tell us your secrets, old lady.